In today's video, we're going to be covering the boat behavior and a little bit on water. So this actually comes from a request that I received. Uh, they wanted to know how I did the docks. And I interpreted that more about not just the docks, the assets, which you could really acquire anywhere. Although I am going to reveal where I got these assets for free later on in the video. Um, but also, you know, more about the water, right? So how does the water move? How do we do the settings for the water? Um, and also I thought, you know what, it's a good opportunity to explore the boat behavior because I think it's pretty neat. So let's take a look here. Let's, let's take a go for a ride. I'm just going to press E to embark. And now I don't move right away. Um, we've got some sound that I've applied to it just for sailing purposes. But if I press W, then I go ahead and move. Um, and I can press the uh, D key or the uh, A key. So it's really just the, the directional movements that you're used to using with your left hand. Um, and this, this is sailing. Right? Like I said, the audio comes from a file that I found uh, on uh, freesound.org. I'll leave, leave a link to the uh, in the description to where you can find that if you like it. Um, I'm just going to circle on back to the docks. Now I wanted to point something out about the docks since this was kind of the, the ask. Is the docks are set to be static, which means I don't think they don't they don't have a collision, right? So I'm going to just uh, plow right into them and see what happens. So let's just yeah, let's, see, let's move a little faster, shall we? There we go. So I can just kind of sail right through. So be aware of that. <clears throat> You're gonna want collision if you want the the boat to stop. Otherwise, you can just hit the edge of the uh, ground and it kind of releases you yeah when you're on the boat and you're sailing in the water you're stuck in the boat until you hit ground and then you're free to disembark from there so let's take a look and see how all this works all right so the first thing we need to know about is water right how do we make a lake like this um so this scene that i put together this was the scene that i used for the animal behaviors same scene um it didn't take me very long to make. I obviously I generated the the uh, terrain from the the awesome uh, terrain generator that comes with the product, and then uh, from there I had to lower the ground so that the water would you know come through and, and rise above the ground. So you can see if I in fact let me uh, let me turn the water off here. Let me show you. If we go into uh, <clears throat> the terrain building tool. We open up water. Um, we have the settings for water here. We also, over on the left, have the view options for the level itself. And you can see that we are previewing water in the editor. So if I just turn that off, then we can see kind of how the ground uh, sh uh, sinks down below. So just like a, a real lake would. I tried to kind of press that down. And if I wanted to do more, I could use the terrain editor to just kind of model that down a little bit deeper all right there's a couple of fish i added on, on there so um we can put our water right back and the water mechanics um are fairly simple on the surface you have the the, the height in meters so this is a uh, 75 meters high um and then the water speed is really just if you look closely and you see it kind of moving there that's really what it's referring to there's also advanced settings so we check on that there's a whole lot more under the hood uh, we have the uh, water wave size, uh, water wind con contribution. So that just kind of uh, all contributes to the movement of the water and how it um, how it works. The same thing with, honestly, the same thing with almost all of these things, right? Like, look at what happens if I change water tiling patch size to something lower, like 10. It's a lot more still, right? If I change it to, say, 20... It's even more active. So all of it play, pays a par, plays a part in uh, how the water acts. And I think rather than go through each individual one of these settings, I think I'll just leave it to you uh, to play around with it and see what works best for you. Um, I also wanted to review the boat behavior because that's really what these uh, behavior tutorials are about. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So... <clears throat> it's really important that 
uh, we make sure that the general settings are set up. Now, this particular boat comes with Game Gear Max, I'm pretty sure, so it already has these settings applied. But if you were to import your own boat, make sure that you've got the physics on, make sure you've got all the settings that it says. And it actually tells you uh, right here, right? Uh, physics on, gravity off, immobile is yes. And then, you know, you can edit the text for the prompt. Uh, so it starts with, you know, E to embark. Um, you've got the boat range, the minimum speed and max speed. And that really just, if I let go of the W key and stop moving forward, it'll continue to drift for a period of time uh, based on the drag. Um, and then eventually it'll come to a slow stop. So again, all these things can be tweaked and, and kind of dialed in for your liking. I mean, you're going to have a different experience, you know, depending on the type of boat, the size of the boat, the size of the water, you know, some of the water effects. So, you know, I don't want to get too nitty gritty on all these individual, um, settings i will point out that the z position has to do with where you're sitting in the boat same thing with y i mean obviously y is going to be up down z is that blue so it's going to be how where are we at in the boat right so um, i set mine pretty high because initially what i noticed is that i was right behind the mast and i couldn't see where i was going so i think i set it up uh, uh, pretty nicely if you're having any problems with that do be sure to go back to your general settings and make sure all that's set up including uh the collision shape needs to be polygon so just bear that in mind uh let's see what else was in here um uh, here's a sound file that i put in there that just kind of plays all the time it's actually like a really long sound file um so i just yeah, i just like the sound of it it sounded kind of cool um so you have the uh, you have different sound files that you can play. You can play up to three of them. Uh, so fairly simple uh, behavior, but pr pretty powerful if you think about what it can really do. And it doesn't have to be a boat necessarily. You know, you can uh, use your imagination and try it out on a number of other things as well. Um, so hopefully that answered the question. Now the last part of this, and really what prompted the video to begin with. And I, I apologize for making you wait until the end was about the dock. So she asked me in the, in the, in the uh, comment, you know, how did I set up the docks? Well, part of that is the, uh, the ground being sunken down such that the, the uh, docks look right, right? The water's coming up, but not above uh, the docks. Uh, but then I also, like I said, interpreted that sort of as where did I get them as well? Cause they don't, they don't necessarily come with uh max but uh some time ago while i was learning about max uh, for the first time i had come across a post in the forums and that post in the forums uh gave me a link to this page here so let me just bring it into the uh the recording so this is hosted on freetoronto.org uh there's uh over a thousand uh game guru max compatible uh assets that are free to download they were released earlier so you can see those license for, for uh, first person shooter creator which is kind of an earlier rendition game uh game guru which i mean classic and then max here as well um so there's a lot to to look at uh but the ones that i'm using in in this this video specifically are nighttime city docks collection now uh, so that's where i got those assets um so hopefully that helps you out. If if I didn't answer the question, please be sure to leave a comment uh, so I can elaborate further in a future video. Incidentally, if you're if you ask you know for an explanation or a video on something, I'm happy to do it. If uh, you're still waiting for me to do something that you asked for, chances are there's a reason why I haven't gotten to it yet. Usually it has to do with what I'm trying to set up to, to demonstrate, or um, in some cases I've found some uh, quirks or bugs or, or something that needed to be uh, updated before I could really do a video on it. So I apologize for making anybody wait, um, but bear in mind that, uh, you know, it is coming. I won't forget. I've got a backlog and I've got notes for, for myself for, for what I uh, intend to do in the future. So please be patient with me. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, and that's it for the video for, for today. Um, 
Let me know uh, how you liked it. If you liked the video, if you learned something new, be sure to click the like button. Um, as always, if you're if you're new here to the channel um, and you want to see more content like this, be sure to click subscribe. And if you want to be notified when videos come out, the bell icon is going to do that for you. I don't really keep a firm uh, release schedule. It's really just as I can produce them. Some videos like this are easier than others. Um, and, and you'll see what I mean in future videos. I've got some pretty elaborate uh, setups coming. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.